bolt to go in. That is the and it should be used. <laughs> so I've got the, um, let's take a little. Hi there, and welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is gonna be a really short video, I promise you, on how to use a Picoscope this is about the cheapest one you can buy. It's about $230. It's a Picoscope 2000 series. It's a two channel and uh, you can get these pretty easily off the internet and they come with lifetime software updates. So you can download the software free of charge and you can update it all free of charge through the net. Picoscope are brilliant at customer support. Okay, so this video is going to be showing you how to capture a map uh, sensor signal using a Picoscope. Right, I've got a bike behind me. This is the one that I'm going to be riding down the South Island in a couple of weeks' time. Well, four weeks' time, actually. Wishful thinking. And uh, I just wanted to give it a quick check over. And I thought, well, while it's on the hoist, let's grab some known good waveform signals. So I can store those away so that either if my bike or Ben's bike develops a problem sometime in the future, we can scan, you know, we can take waveforms from all the sensors and compare them to known good. And it gives us a really good idea where the problem is. Okay, crew, right, over to the bike. Here we go. Okay, so all I've done is just pulled the ECU out from where it normally lives, just to make it a bit easy to get to. And uh, when you're testing these these signals, you really want to be testing them for, at the ECU end. And that way, if you get a dodgy signal, you know that there's either a problem with the sensor or a problem with the wiring. If you test the signal just at the sensor end of the harness, then the you know, and it looks good, that's not telling you that the uh, that the wiring harness has got good integrity too. So always test them at the ECU. And if you've got a fault, then you can test it at the sensor. And if the sensor's good, then you know the faults within the wiring harness. Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Okay, so uh, we've got here the intake air pressure sensor, otherwise known as a MAP sensor. And it's the pink wire. So I'm just going to back probe the pink wire. You should know what back probing is by now. And uh, that's the pink wire just there, real easy to get to. And we're just going to slide that pin through the little sort of, you know, rubber grommet bit that's in there. Make sure it's all the way down to the bottom. And then, very simply, we just got a little probe, and you can open up the probe, and it will clip onto that pin. It's really, really good, actually. And then, you can put that, this is the earth, put the earth onto the battery negative. Perfect. That should work. Right. Let's plug in the Pico scope. Right. So USB cable first, I think. Pop that into there. And we'll use channel A on the Pico scope. There we go. And that's it. Simple as that. Right, round to the laptop. Okay, so we're going to launch the Pico scope. Let's click on the icon. And we've got to set up the parameters again to suit this particular signal output. Come on, little Pico scope. You can do it. Excellent. Okay, you always get this sort of bit of static going on at the start. Now, um, as regards the time division, I'm going to choose 50 milliseconds for this one. There we go. And as regards voltage, plus or minus 5 volts. Right. Now, usually, usually when you open it up, it starts recording straight away. So we'll just stop that so I can start a fresh recording. Okay. So I'm going to start the bike now. I won't be able to do a voiceover when the bike's running. It's just too noisy. But it doesn't take long to take a, take a waveform reading. Here we go. Got to give him a rev, haven't you? Can't help it. 
Right, so we go back. We took quite a few pages out, look, 32 pages. Jeez. We go back. There we go. Right. There we go. Right. So that basically is a known good waveform for the map sensor. Air sorry, intake air pressure sensor, they call that. This particular manufacturer. Okay, and then we can go across to some other pages where I actually give the bike a bit of a rev. There we go, look. And you can see the waveform changes. This is a pretty high RPM actually, but no load. That's something else to bear in mind, and that's where the engine actually gets turned off. So you can see that the pressure inside the intake fluctuates quite a bit with each induction when that in intake valve opens up. And if you want to take an actual voltage reading, you can just put your cursor basically on the line, press down, and we've got 1.809 volts at that point. And then there's a maximum pretty much up here somewhere. We've got 3.75, near enough. And um, you can then, this is a known good waveform, like I say, and then you can compare that to the waveform of a suspected faulty map sensor. Pretty bloody good, isn't it? And then, if you want to save it, and it'll save all of this, you just go File, Save, and we'll call that, well, we'll call it the proper name, Intake Air Pressure Sensor. Oh, can't spell. There we go. And then you can email that, that file to anybody you want and they can download the PicoScope software off the net as well and they can view the file and they can help you to diagnose problems. Brilliant, isn't it? Most impressive. Right, back to the bench. There you go. I told you that that would be a really quick video and it is. There's not a lot to it and, uh, you know, for the time it takes to set up that PicoScope and capture uh, some live data, some, you know, a waveform coming from the signal wire of that sensor and then comparing it to a known good, you, know, you can say, well, yes, it's good. No, it's not. Do we change it? Do we not change it? Simple as that. Um, well, hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, why not subscribe to the channel? Click on subscribe. You'll see a little gear icon pop up. Click the gear icon and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. Uh, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Please use the comments on YouTube as your first point of contact. Ask your questions there because that's where everybody looks anyway. And it may well be that I've already answered your question and you'll see the answer somewhere down there. And you'll be able to get straight back to fixing your vehicle. Um, I don't have time to answer all questions, I'm sorry. But don't forget, other viewers do chip in. They read the questions and they chip in and they help out. And that's what it's all about, chaps. Okay, crew. Well, thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.